Welcome back. It's long been part of the lore of the West. Among the Chumash, the Vaqueros, the Missions, there were fur trappers. Now this past week, California became the first state of the nation to ban fur trapping. The Wildlife Protection Act of 2019 was signed this week by Governor Gavin Newsom and represents a victory for animal rights activists, including Judy Mancuso, founder and president of Social Compassion in Legislation. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We should point out that this is just one of a series of bills you now have before the legislature. Uh, but first, fur trapping, how many fur trappers do we have? Well, there's less than 100, but the situation is one trapper can wipe, wipe out an entire species in an area. Has that happened? Has that happened? There was over 200 foxes that were trapped in L.A. County in less than a three-year period. So these animals are fragile between drought, fire, poisons, overdevelopment. It's one more assault on them. And, and these furs are not going domestically, from what I understand. No, they are not. They're being uh, sold to Russia and China primarily. You have a bill in the legislature that's already passed out of one house that would ban circus animals. So we get, we're getting rid of the big tent for the most part. Well, you can keep the tent, but just take out the animals. Uh, yes, uh, well, animals are why? mistreated. They're, I mean, they die in transit. They're kept in these cargo containers. They live their entire life. So they're captured from the wild, are they're bred in a cruel fashion. They're put into these uh, circuses. We're and talking like I elephants, said, tigers. tigers. Uh, all, all the exotics, yes. Actually, the uh, bill captures a lot of animals included. And I, I believe it passed out of the state Senate unanimously uh, with yes, both, both people parties. people understand the cruelty. Uh, you know, we've come of age with these issues. Right. You have another bill that would require microchipping in dogs. Dogs and cats. Dogs and cats, which one would say, well, maybe that's a good idea, but maybe it also adds, adds to the expense of adopting a dog. It adds a negligible expense, but the expense of not doing it is so much greater. We bring in over 500,000 dogs and cats a year just in California, and we euthanize over half. Now, who pays for that? You and I, taxpayers. And that cost over $290 million to house and kill animals every year. With a microchip, they can find their way home. And, as you know, we have natural disasters, and that's another reason to make sure that the animals have permanent identification. Now, there's also a bill in the legislature, it's not yours, although you support it, that would essentially ban fur, the sale of fur in the state of California. That's right. It's already been banned in the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you look at retail marketing and online marketing, some would say, listen, we can buy it. Uh, through Amazon. We can buy it online. Why is it so important to ban it retail in California? Well, first of all, as you know, we're the fifth largest economy in the world. And as we go, so goes the nation on these uh, humane animal bills. And so we will put a dent. It is about supply and demand. And if the demand goes down, then of course, less animals are going to be bred in these horrible conditions and tortured and the way they're killed, you don't even want me to go into that. Well, right, well, the industry says that's, that's, um, that's not true, that they, that they have plenty of, institutionally, they do everything they can to humanely treat these animals. Well, it's just not true. And they're the ones making money off of it, but there is plenty of uh, footage that anyone can watch and why public opinion is shifting is because all this undercover video and whatnot that used to be available to just those that uh, looked for it, sought it out, is now online. And so public opinion has changed. They, they will argue, however, that you're going to establish a black market. There's going to be a demand for that somewhere and that it, they will go outside. They can go to Nevada, go to Las Vegas to buy your fur. Every time you shift the paradigm for the animals, the opposition to it, the folks making the money off the animals say the sky is falling. And they will say that it falls in so many different ways in so many right. fashions. So let me have you finish up here. So what goes forward? I mean, you're saying that the public has changed their attitude towards animals. Yes. Some would say, OK, this, what's next is uh, vegetarianism because there is, is there not cruelty in the manufacturing of meat? 
There absolutely is. And as we know, um, it affects climate change. And uh, not a crazy group came out with that. The United Nations came out with just the impact it has. And we know the health. So the cattle industry has got to be worried? They are worried. The uh, Beyond Burgers and all the alternatives are doing better than they are. I've been vegan for 30 years myself. So, um, you know, it's it's a good thing to do. Right. At what point, though, do you cross the, the, the Rubicon here and try to change not just the animal, but the behavior of the of the population? We don't want you to have meat anymore. Well, what you have to do is you have to show folks why it's better not to. Right. So that some you can of them do that go, without legislation. That's correct. Yes. And you can get so much voluntary compliance on a lot of issues. And then for some of them, you need to create laws and mandate it. I'm not saying we can mandate veganism by any stretch, but I think that uh, we see a change and a big shift happening organically. Judy Mancuso is the founder and CEO of Social Compassion and Legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you for having you me. the best of luck. Right, next, LA's homeless outreach effort responds to criticism that it's not doing enough to get people off the street when we return.